Hi everyone, I'm Christian Ball, a real estate partner at Mills and Reeve, and I thought today I would talk about a recent paper which has been issued by Universities UK regarding some of the things to think about as we emerge from lockdown. I'm really, really mindful that given the, the world leading key role our British universities play, not only in education and research, but also as leading employers, public and private stakeholders, and drivers of local regeneration, it's really important and vital that as the country and economy emerges from lockdown, our universities also emerge with the right guidance from government, public health authorities, and health and safety legislation. And so, as I mentioned at the start, Universities UK has produced some principles and guidance, and it is just that. It's not legally binding, it's just a useful tool to help universities unlock their estate and their facilities. And so the intention is to use some of these key principles and considerations in conjunction with wider official government advice and public health requirements. So I thought today I would run through some of what some of what these pre key principles are. The first one is actually quite an obvious one, which is when universities, estates and senior leadership teams are making decisions about the easing of COVID-19 restrictions, the priority should be the well-being and health and safety of students, staff, visitors and the local community. So this could involve things like a university-wide uh, action plan, which is flexible enough to respond to peaks and troughs in, in COVID-19, but also emerging public health requirements. It should identify activities that can only be done on campus and it should involve regular risk assessments, looking at say the capacities of buses coming from the campus and also the feasibility and operational requirements around say a staggered working day. The second thing the paper talks about is universities making appropriate changes to university layouts and infrastructure and as a minimum the paper mentions that this should be in accordance with public health guidelines, including those on, on social distancing. So think about heavy traffic areas such as lecture theatres, laboratories, shops, canteens, accommodation, libraries and student unions when you're planning this. The next requirement or advice is to review the teaching, learning and assessments to ensure that there is required flexibility as much as possible built into that. So, for example, how to address and meet demand for online courses and whether, in some cases, a blend of online and face to face teaching and learning would be appropriate to avoid large numbers of students congregating in shared areas such as lecture theatres. The next one is also really, really important and topical, which is a regular review of the welfare and mental health of staff and students with good updated regular communication recognizing that for many the transition from lockdown will affect different student cohorts courses and staff in different ways and so think about what action needs to be taken to help mitigate the impact on specific groups the fifth key principle and guidance is effective processes and the need to have them in place to welcome and support international students and staff. And interestingly, the paper goes into some detail about any self-isolation periods and how that would actually work. So estates teams need to consider and plan how to manage, source and support students and staff to complete any self-isolation period. And also good communication to those people about some of the legal implications should they breach that and also think when you're planning this about the impact on international students and staff when they are having their inductions and orientation programs the next one i think is also fairly obvious but obviously really really important which is regularly review hygiene and cleaning protocols and adapt them as the public health advice evolves in all of this the confidence of users and occupiers is absolutely key to getting a smoother lockdown a release from lockdown as possible the next one is carrying out a refreshing risk assessment to enable research to be carried out specifically this should follow and implement government guidance on laboratories and other research facilities 
and spaces to protect the researchers and give them the confidence to get back to work. So this could involve perhaps publishing key information on universities' risk assessments internally via intranets and also externally on the website. Consultation with staff, students and unions as we transition from lockdown is one of the key themes that runs through the whole of the University's UK paper, the whole of the paper. And finally, it really does encourage active working with civic and local community groups and the community as we transition from the lockdown. So this could be engaging with those groups, engaging with councils, the police force and businesses, as well as residents to understand any local concerns about the, the universities emerging from, from lockdown, including the return of students. And this is particularly important where you have the universities are embedded within a city. Maintaining and communicating approaches to test, track, trace and isolate is also really, really important in the event of, unfortunately, uh, a local resurgence. So I'm very mindful this is just a quick run through some of the key principles in the paper. If you have any queries, please do get in touch. Thank you.